Welcome back to the channel, you kooks. Today, we're just gonna go through a very easy off-grid solar setup. So if you're building a van conversion and you just want an easy, straightforward tutorial, you've come to the right place, so let's get right into it. So before we get into this off-grid system, I just wanna note, we do have a van kooks van conversion masterclass that's coming out soon. I set all this up for the masterclass and I go through step by step, much more detail inside of the masterclass. We're gonna go through module by module, wiring the batteries, bus bars, fuse panels, everything is covered. We teach you how to size your cables and your fuses and everything you're gonna to need to know, not only about power, but also how to frame your van, how to insulate your van, how to build cabinets, all the things that you're gonna to need to get on the road. So checking that out, vancooks.com, signing up early to get the early kooks discount. It's really close. Thanks for you who have been patiently waiting. I'm so close to getting it done. It was more work than I really ever imagined. But yeah, signing up, checking it out, but let's get right into this. Here we have our little mock setup of what ideally you would want your power system to look like. This is just more of a basic entry level system. Obviously, if you're trying to build something a little more complex, you're probably in the wrong place. This is just something to get us started and to get us on the road. We can always upgrade components as we move forward, but just wherever you are, wherever you are in your journey, we're just gonna go through, and this can work for so many different components, so not sticking with any of the brands or any of the, of the inverters or anything we have here. We're just kind of focusing on how we wire this. So first off, we're gonna start with our power source. So whether you're using AGM or lithium, you're definitely gonna need a battery bank. Um, I would recommend a little more than 100 amp hour, just depending on what you're using. If you're using a fridge, you might want 200 amp hours. Uh, the fridge does use more power than, you're, than you would expect. So sizing your battery bank to your system's needs. So whether the battery single or double, they do sell 200 amp hour lithium batteries. Now, a lot of different sizes and batteries. So first off, let's say we had multiple batteries, we would need to wire those batteries in parallel. So just referring to here, super easy setup, negative to negative, positive to positive, we just chain the batteries together. When we wire in parallel, we double our amp hours, but the volts stay the same. So if we had three 100 amp hour batteries, we would have 300 amp hours at 12 volts. Moving on, first I like to install a on off switch for our entire system. So this is a master on off switch. So essentially we can just demonstrate it here. The light turns on, everything's live. We have power to all our units, the charge controller fired up. But if I just turn off the power, we can shut everything down. Why I like this is because we can shut the power down as we wire our system, keeping everything safe. Also, if we were to have the van in storage and we just wanted to shut it down, we can just power the system off. So moving on forward out of the switch into a bus bar. Bus bars are great because they're, they distribute our power. So these are common positives, common negative bus bars. And from these bus bars, we're gonna be able to install everything so much easier. And if we're expanding our system down the line, it's so much easier to get in and install just to the bus bar post. The other way to do it would be just putting everything on your battery terminals. And you can see here we have four fairly large cables. If we put all those on one battery terminal, it would become a cluster. It would just be very clustered and it'd be difficult to deal with. If we had to get one off, we'd have to take them all off, figure out which one we need off. So just having them on a bus bar keeps the system clean and it's just easy to manage. As you can see here, we know where everything's going. So I highly recommend using bus bars. These are 250 amp rated bus bars. All the links are in the description for everything we're going through here. So we'll go to the negative side. So right off the negative battery terminal, we're gonna go straight up to the bus bar. Here you can uh, add a shunt right here in place. So instead of having it go straight to the bus bar, you could put a shunt here. I definitely recommend wiring a shunt. It just is going to monitor our batteries so much better, so much uh, just more detailed, more precise. Our charge controllers can monitor the batteries, but the shunt is gonna give us a more realistic picture of what our battery state of charge is at. So the shunt would interrupt here and then going into the negative ground. Also, in this demonstration, I couldn't ground the battery. So 
From the bus bar, we would also want to ground to the van chassis. So coming off the bus bar down to the chassis so we can ground our whole system. And then, so we have the shunt and then we'd go to ground. And then we have our negative bus bar. So this is just a common negative and we could use this to wire all of our accessories off of just one common negative. Once again, easy to use. And also these bus bars come with these little covers. So they're all covered up, everything's protected and it looks nice and clean. So from the bus bar, we'll start with the fuse panel. So we just come right off six gauge cable. This is a 50 amp fuse and this is our fuse, our 12 volt fuse panel. So sizing your fuse to your needs here, assuming that we had all of our loads, I calculated them all up, maybe we're gonna run about 40 amps, and then multiplying 40 times 1.25, just to give us a safe bet on our fuse rating, is about 50 amps. Uh, it's a little higher, it's a little lower than 50, but rounding up, we would find a 50 amp fuse useful here. And we just use Watt's law to discover that out. Watts equals volts times amps. And just an easy way to kind of calculate how much you need. We always wire our cables and our fuses in amps. So first finding how much amps we have, then sizing our cables and our fuses to our amps. So out of the fuse box, this is where we're gonna distribute all the power to our entire system. So we just have a common bus bar here on the top. So common negative, negative off, the, off of the bus bar into the common negative on the fuse panel. Sharing all these common negatives, we're gonna wire all of our negatives up for our accessories, our lights, our refrigerator, our sink pump, our diesel heater, our 12 volt, our USB chargers, whatever you have, you're gonna wire it all off of the fuse panel. So something cool about the fuse panels is, I like to recommend wiring all everything up and it's not really live until we pop a fuse in. So if we take this fuse out, it's really in there. So once we pop the fuse out, you see the red light goes on. That's indicating that there is a short or there, the, the circuit is not complete. So once the red light's on, as you can see, we pull the fuse out, the light turns off. Once we pop the fuse back in, the light goes on. So when you wire your system, keeping all your fuses out and then popping them all back into place. And then once again, just determining how many amps your lights run and then calculating what fuse you need. So let's say these run at about, let's say I had eight of these, they'd probably run at about 1.2 amps. So then we would need a, they don't make one amp fuses, so we would use a two amp fuse. And I have a lot of this broken down in our van conversion masterclass. And you can check that out online. And you can sign up now. It's so close to being done. And get, that, get in on the early discount now. So moving on from the fuse panel, we're going to jump to the charge controller. So the charge controller hooks up to the battery here. So two cords coming out and then going into our bus bar. So sharing the common positive to power the MPPT to also distribute the power to our battery, negative as well, down to our common negative bus bar. Then from here, we have two wires going out. These would go to our solar panels. And whatever your solar setup is, if it's modular or if it's permanent, these would either run up to the roof or you would wire them so you could have your modular panel set up. I didn't set it up in the um, example here, but using this uh, 40 amp breaker is a great way to protect your MPPT charge controller. So always on our positive end, I highly recommend wiring one of these breakers, throwing it on here, and then running the wire up to the solar panel. Why do I like the breakers? Well, if we were having issues with our system and we needed to isolate the problem, this breaker essentially acts as a switch. So we could trip the breaker manually, popping that off, that would disconnect the, the cable, disconnecting our solar, and then we could see, we could kind of identify the problem. Also, we could just turn the solar off by just flipping that cable down, shutting off the solar input if we were ever, say, storing it or 
Um, I like to shut the solar off too because if we have solar running through the MPPT charge controller, it will still power all of our systems as long as we're getting solar into the solar panel. So sometimes it's nice to cut this off and then cut this off and we can essentially shut the whole system down. And referring to the wiring diagram in the uh, description down here, you can get that on our website and this will help you go through. So using a breaker on your solar input on your charge controller, highly recommended. And also some of these charge controllers also have a port for the load. This Bougie RV 40 amp does not. So I wired all my, my uh, fuse panel off of my bus bar. Um, it's nice to have a unit that does have a, a, an additional load here because then it kind of monitors how much power we're using on our load. And you can see here it has um, solar, battery, and then our load here or our lights or our, our accessories, our fuse panel. So that's nice because this, is, this only has two. So imagining they had two more that came out to here, then we wouldn't have to wire onto our bus bar there. And then a lot of times the charge controllers will have a monitor and they'll show us our state of charge and how much power we're using. So I do like charge controllers that do have that additional input for our power source so we can see what we're using in any given time. The shunt will tell us, but it's nice to kind of have that display with our charge controller. And then lastly, we're gonna wire a inverter. So coming off of our positive bus bar, coming down through with a thicker cable. This is a two gauge, this is a four gauge cable coming into a 200 amp fuse. And then from the fuse, it goes into our 2000 watt um, inverter here. And these are pretty straightforward. They just have positive and negative terminals. And then the negative is also hooked up to our bus bar here. And then once we have the inverter on, Oh, I have the system off still. Turning everything on, we can fire the inverter up, getting us 2000 watts. We can plug this bad boy in and I can even just turn this heat gun on. So using the inverter, we can power AC outlets. This is a more straightforward, easy, basic demonstration. I just like using the inverter and you can always hook in a surge protector with more outlets. That has three outlets. I believe that's more than we are ever gonna need in a van. People like to wire AC outlets all over their van and make it look like a house, but essentially everything is kind of in arm's reach. So we can just get some longer extension cords and hook up to this inverter and not have to worry about wiring an entire breaker box for our AC outlets. So I just like wiring an inverter that has three outlets on it. That's gonna be more than you need. Obviously, you're gonna want a bigger battery bank if you are dealing with a 2000 watt inverter. So this is just for demonstration purposes only. I would recommend at least a 300 amp hour battery. I'm not sure what you'd be powering with 2000 watts. Maybe you're running a heat gun or whatever you're using. But knowing that, that this could only power the the battery at 2000 watts for not very long. So sizing your inverter properly to your battery bank, maybe here we would go for something more like a 500 watt. We could power some computers. And I highly recommend something that you can turn on and off. If you're running that inverter all the time, it's going to drain your battery. So this one, we can turn on and off, turn it off, cut the power, and we're just back to normal. And then one last thing, we're gonna to wanna to charge while we're driving. So this is a lithium battery. We're going to need to use a DC to DC battery charger. So this is a 40 amp. They make a few different uh, sizes in this, just depending on how much amperage you want to charge your battery at. And we're gonna wire this to the batteries, to the vehicle batteries, and then to our, our house batteries here. So if you have lithium batteries, you're gonna need a DC to DC battery charger since the chemistry is different from your starter battery to the lithium, going with the DC to DC battery charger is the only way. But if you have AGM batteries, you can get away using one of these smart battery isolators. This one's from Keyline. Uh, I've used this for five years almost before I upgraded to lithium. And then I switched to this 
DC to DC charger. If you are wiring one of these, they do get pretty warm. So putting it somewhere where it gets ample um, air flow, because if you keep it all kind of enclosed, it's gonna get pretty hot. These things do get very hot. So just knowing that you're gonna need ample space also on your inverter, giving it some room to breathe. But yeah, that's about it. Um, obviously there's tons of choices on the market for any of these anything here. I really like this Unowix battery for the price. It can't be beat. It's pretty solid. I've been using it for many demonstrations and it charges up normal and it runs normally and I haven't really found anything wrong with it, although I'm not super tacky and I'm not going to take this thing apart. But referring to other videos, um, checking out Unowix, the price point's really nice, so that's why I got this one. And yeah, any other products here, I'll have linked in the description. I do like Bougie RV's products. Um, they're pretty affordable and they make good stuff. Specifically, I really like their cables for their solar input and their branch connectors. So I hope this video was helpful and I hope this helps you on your journey building your van. Uh, leave any questions in the descriptions. And most importantly, we have a Van Kooks masterclass. It's almost done. I wired all this up for the masterclass. I went through it step by step. So checking that out, signing up early at vancooks.com and get access to it when it's live. It should be just a couple more weeks now. Early kooks get a discount on the masterclass. So like and subscribe. Please subscribe and share with a friend if this video was helpful or anyone you know who's building a van. Maybe this helped you. Help them. Share the love. And we will see you kooks next time. Peace out.